I love coming to TAT, it's probably my favourite meeting just in terms of my interests and, and the research I do, it's an ideal forum to, to meet people. But um, this time I'm, I'm chairing the session on DNA repair inhibitors and, and you know, a session looking at where these drugs are going in the clinic. All of us um, have within every cell DNA repair systems to protect our genome. What happens is, is twofold in cancers. Sometimes this has gone wrong and you've got an unstable genome, but the cells are using those DNA repair mechanisms. So there's two ways in which we're using the drugs. One is some of our cancer treatments cause DNA damage. The tumor cells then use the innate repair mechanisms to overcome that, and it's a cause of cancer drug resistance. But also we've discovered there are some tumors where part of the DNA repair pathways are defective and using a second inhibitor, sort of knocking out both belt and braces, you can actually get the synthetic lethality and get tumor cell kill without needing to use any other drug as well. Well, the topics within that are, are trying to look at the, the, the novel things coming through, the newer drugs, but also some understanding some of the science. So the, the first um, presenter from the NCI, Yves Pommier, is talking about the science behind how we try to use the PARP inhibitors better, the first PARP inhibitor having been licensed at the end of last year, and, and three or four other very good ones close behind that. So we've got a good set of drugs to use in the clinic. I'm talking about how we've tried to use them in combination and the, just setting the scene on the problems of that and partly setting the scene for the final two plenary speakers who are actually talking about a novel class of agent, the ATR inhibitors, which is blocking another DNA repair pathway. I'm really just trying to set the scene for how, how we try to do it with PARP inhibitors and some of the problems, the single agent where it was less toxic has worked well. Combining with DNA damaging drugs has been a real problem. But the ATR inhibitors where colleagues are speaking subsequently, mostly those are going into the clinic once again with the DNA repair inhibitors. So it's setting the scene on the, the problems we've seen before and what, you know, what they're going to try and do in the future. Well, one of the problems with, if you give a DNA damaging drug, it's a systemic drug, it treats the whole of the patient. What you hope is you get what's called a therapeutic index, better treatment of the tumor than actually side effects in the patient. One of the problems we've had with giving a second drug that protects some of that damage is you've seen more side effects as well as more tumor effect and it's getting that balance right. I think with the ATR inhibitors, what's an exciting opportunity is potentially combining the ATR inhibitor with radiotherapy where you've got a more localized treatment where you give the damage very direct and focused on the tumor, could we then make radiotherapy more effective? And I think that's one of the, the big areas where the ATR inhibitors may be successful. PARP is an enzyme that makes poly-ADP ribose polymers, hence its name. It, how PARP inhibitors work, all the active ones in the clinic, bind in, uh, stick in the binding site of the enzyme and block its activity. The ATR inhibitor, ATR is another um, signaling part of the pathway and s similarly ATR inhibitors have been modelled to bind and block that enzyme. The PARP inhibitor is very practical in the clinic and there are thousands of patients who are now have benefited from them and the ones going forward are all oral agents so they're well tolerated and easy to take. The ATR inhibitors are just starting on that journey. Um, the Vertex compound we took into the clinic in 2012 and the AstraZeneca compound went into the clinic last year. The take-home message for, for people who are, are more clinically based, and a, a lot of the audience here are clinicians doing these early phase trials, is that, that you know, these are powerful new drugs coming through that are going to add to our ability to, to, to treat cancer patients and keep them fitter for longer.